All right, welcome back to English class. Um, you know, last week we did a study of just our unit 13 vocabulary, and this week we're tackling both vocabulary and some literature. Hopefully we're getting to the swing of things. And so it made sense to me to piggyback our study of the Canterbury Tales. We had just finished the Pardoner's Tale, if you can recall about the three riders searching for death and they find the, the pile of gold and instead plot to kill each other, thus finding death at the end or under the tree. Um, the other story that's included in our textbook is the wife of Bath's tale and it's one of my favorites and so for that reason i didn't want to leave it out um it is not as short as the partner's tale um but i just find a lot of it clever perhaps because it's told from the perspective of the wife of bath this older woman who's been you know married several times who claims to be a love expert um and it always kind of solicits um good discussion in class. So I might post a discussion question um, on our Google Classroom related to this. Um, hopefully, I'll, if I do so, I'll let you know via remind. Um, our goal with this is to analyze how the Wife of Bath's Tale demonstrates the characteristics of medieval romance. Uh, we'll record character and plot developments on your reading guide. It's attached to the Google Classroom posting. Each of you, ha it makes a copy for you, so you can do it that way. Um, you could, if you needed to, write it down on notebook paper as well or um, some of you asked for hard copies of it and I provided that to you as well and you can send me pictures. Um, or perhaps it'd be better if you attach them to that Google Classroom posting. Um, the essential question we have listed at the bottom is how does literature reflect the time period that produced it? We learned so much of British history from literature and especially uh, you know, through the Canterbury Tales, Chaucer just gives us a, a whole wide variety of insight into the various types of people and social classes and their interactions and their values. Um, the journal prompt that uh, would have gone with us had we been in class uh, is posted here. Is a good marriage an equal partnership? Or you can see in small font at the bottom, does one person like me to take the lead or be the decision maker? The wife of Bath, given the fact that she's been married five times, um, certainly claims to have some expertise about love and the like. Um, you know, I, I put up on the screen some things to remind you about. Remember that Bath is just a city. Um, some of her characteristics physically was the ga uh, her gap tooth, which the medieval society would have viewed as kind of a sign of her sexuality or her lustfulness. She was deaf in one ear, and the backstory of that is one of her last husbands like whacked her in the head with a book about evil wives. Large hips. Um, she claimed, you know, she knew the remedies for love's mischances and art in which she knew the oldest dances. She makes her money. Um, Making cloth, um, she, you know, certainly her attire shows us that she lives a pretty good life, um, you know, and can sustain herself. Now, that does not mean that she did not want a husband. It doesn't mean she had the right to own property or things like that. Um, you know, even at this point in history, even though she is kind of a quote unquote independent woman, not the type of independent woman we would think of today, she would have had to have married, you know, be married to have some rights and, you know, be able to move up in society. Um, the genre. So genre is a type of literary work. The Wife of Bath's Tale is set in the days of Britain's legendary King Arthur. So Arthur and Guinevere and Lancelot and Camelot is his, you know, ideal kingdom, the Knights of the Round Table. All of that stuff is, is going on at the time period that her story takes place in. Um, it qualifies as what we call a medieval romance, which is, a, is an adventure tale about knights and chivalry. Um, the code of, of ideal knightly behavior is stressed. Um, Arthurian romances were incredibly popular during the medieval period. We have not read any yet. I might present one to you next week, uh, The Sword in the Stone, which was made into a Disney movie. And so a lot of us are familiar with that. It's about how young King Arthur becomes king. Um, but these often dealt with ideal knightly behavior, traits like loyalty, faith, honor, courtesy, especially to women. Now, what's unique in this particular story is that a knight will break the rules of chivalry. Well, he'll break the rules of just being a decent human being um, once you read. And as a punishment, he has to undergo a type of quest. And a quest is this adventurous expedition to secure or achieve something. You know, there were lots of quests that knights went on during the medieval period. One that was especially popular was the, the quest for the Holy Grail, um, which was supposedly like the chalice that Jesus drank out of at the Last Supper. Um, Monty Python has a spoof that's like a British comedy group that's pretty funny. Um, if, you know, that type of humor appeals to you. Um, but yeah, there were lots of quests for especially like Christian relics from the church during this time. Um, the way that the Wife of Bath's Tale is structured, 
you know, we know that the Canterbury Tales as a whole is a framed story or a frame tale, which is a story about people telling stories. So the larger work of the Canterbury Tales contains, you know, a frame for a lot of other stories that are told within it. One of those individual tales within the larger work can also have an inner tale. So it just like adds another layer to things. And the Wife of Bass tale has that type of structure. So for example, in, in the opening of this story, the wife of Bath, who is the narrator, is going to interrupt the main plot with a passage in which she's going to criticize friars, okay? Um, and what we don't see in the selection we're reading is that she's actually been arguing with the friar as they're, you know, galloping along to, the, to Canterbury to visit the shrine of Thomas Beckett. Um, you know, there were some um, stereotypes about friars at the time. Uh, they were kind of known for going around and seducing women. Someone like the wife of Bath is not going to be a big fan of that. Uh, we'll skip this part. All right. So I think that's all I needed for my introduction. I'm going to do a separate video in which I do a reading so you can listen along and I'll stop and offer commentary to help you with your guide. Okay. That's all for now. Bye.